If you're viewing this, you've asked for more information on rainfall characteristics used in the BMP trains model. Precipitation is what drives the hydrologic cycle and what generates runoff. So to properly understand runoff, conveyance of runoff, and treatment of runoff, we need to understand precipitation as well. The BMP trains uses runoff or uses rainfall data which were developed by uh, Harper and Baker in 2007 uh, as a project for FDEP and is summarized in the document titled Evaluation of Current Stormwater Design Criteria Within the State of Florida. This study included an evaluation of rainfall characteristics throughout the state of Florida and included information on rainfall depths, variability in rainfall, and inter-event dry periods. The first step in evaluating the rainfall data in Florida was to develop uh, all of the available meteorological data. In looking back at historical data, there are about 111 sites within the state of Florida that have collected rainfall data uh, historically. Uh, we also looked at some sites immediately outside of the state of Florida uh, because our intention is to develop isopleths and we needed to have some uh, boundary data to complete the isopleths. We generated uh, all of the data for each of these sites that you see here, 160 sites in total, over the period from 1971 to 2000. And using that data, we developed the following rainfall isopleths that you see on this figure. As you know, rainfall is highly variable in the state of Florida, ranging from a high of about 66 inches in western portions of the Panhandle to as low as 38 inches in Key West. The isopleths that you see on this map are the isopleths that are used in the BMP trains model. The BMP trains model includes expanded views of the rainfall isopleths so that you can look at a specific project and determine the appropriate rainfall for that particular area. For example, if you were conducting a project in Liberty County, uh, in maybe the central portion of Liberty County, you would be located between rainfall isopleths of 61 and 60 inches. And you could uh, iterate a more specific rainfall by knowing your uh, specific project location. The next thing that we did to look at uh, additional variability in rainfall is to collect one hour rainfall data for the meteorological monitoring sites in Florida. Now of the 111 sites that actually exist in Florida, only 45 of those contain one hour rainfall data that could be used uh, to identify specific rain events. So we evaluated the data from those 45 sites and we grouped the data into individual rain events using a three hour separation to define those events. Now sometimes EPA uses a six hour separation for defining rain events, but we felt that a three hour separation was more appropriate for Florida because of our subtropical climate. So we created a historical data set of daily rain events over the pe available period of record for each of the 45 rainfall hourly recording sites. And at most sites, uh, that included uh, a data uh, range of approximately 25 to almost 60 years per site. In summarizing that data, we developed rainfall frequency distributions for each of the 45 sites. All of them look similar to the diagram shown uh, in the figure for the Branford recording site. Most of the rain events that occur within the state of Florida uh, are relatively small rain events of a tenth of an inch or less and 
uh, at the Branford site, they had about 45 rain events each year, which were in this range. The next range is the 0.1 to 0.2 range, and as you can see, there are approximately 12 events per year in that range. And the number of events gets smaller as the depth of rainfall increases. You see a jump here uh, in the number of events. That's because the intervals now, uh, instead of going in tenth of an inch intervals, are uh, being listed in half inch intervals. Uh, but the, the major point here is that rainfall in Florida is characterized by a, a lot of relatively small events with a much smaller percentage of larger events. In looking further at the characteristics of these events, we looked at the number of annual rain events at sites throughout Florida. The highest number of events per year occurs in Miami with 158 events per year, with the lowest number occurring in Cross City with 104 events per year. So you can see the, the variability here uh, in number of rain events per year uh, at each of these major uh, monitoring locations. Another thing that we looked at is uh, how these events might perhaps affect runoff characteristics and in doing that we looked at events less than one inch. So in Key West 93.5 percent of the events that occur on an average annual basis are less than one inch. That means that only a small number of events uh, are greater than one inch each year. However, in the Tallahassee area, only 84% of the annual rain events are less than one inch, with 16% representing substantially larger events. Now that impacts uh, runoff generation as well as treatment system uh, effectiveness for uh, systems such as retention ponds. Another thing that we looked at was variability in inner event dry period. Differences in inner event dry period can also impact the efficiency of stormwater practices that rely upon infiltration because of the variability in when the next rain event may occur. Dry season conditions uh, range from uh, a high of about 5.63 days in Fort Myers per rain event, between rain events, to lows of about uh, 3.36 days per rain event uh, under dry season conditions in Pensacola. Under wet season conditions, Miami has a low of 1.4 days per rain event with a high in the Melbourne area of approximately 2.27 days. So again, variability in the timing between rain events has a substantial impact on the efficiency of stormwater systems constructed in these different areas throughout the state. So in summary, rainfall in Florida is highly variable, ranging from 66 to 68 inches per year in Tallahassee and Pensacola to 38 inches per year in Key West. There's a large variability in the number of annual rain events which occurs. Uh, most of the rain events in Florida are less than a half an inch and approximately 84 to 94 percent are less than one inch. Inner event dry periods are highly variable for both wet season and dry season conditions which can affect the efficiencies of stormwater BMPs. So in general, rainfall variability is important to know because it impacts both runoff volumes and the effectiveness of BMPs within the state of Florida. Thank you.